Hi guys! In this video we aren't doing any procedural generation. I know, shocking. We are instead going to turn some regular old meshes into jelly and then jiggle it wiggle. I'll run some jiggly footage for your viewing pleasure while we discuss the basic idea behind this project. So, in real life, every object has a certain stiffness and if we apply a force to it, it reacts. Things that are really stiff might break if the pressure is high enough, but things that are more supple, like for example a blown up balloon, aren't just breaking, they are deforming with the pressure. Since a balloon, for example, isn't empty but filled with air, there is a pressure inside that will push back. Therefore, once no more pressure is applied, the balloon will go back to its initial shape. Now, imagine said balloon to be filled with water instead of air. Water reacts in a different manner, where when we now release the pressure, the balloon will jiggle more visibly back and forth until it will reach its initial state. And this is sort of what we want to emulate here. Sadly, to have a mesh of a jiggly jello pudding react like an actual jiggly jello pudding isn't an inbuilt functionality in any engine I can think of right now. But fear no more, I'm here to show you how to do it. Since a mesh is really just a hollow shell without any volume, we need to do some math here and trick ourselves some physics that might not be realistic but do look believable. So let's jump straight into the code. We should start off with our Jelly Vertex class. This will, like the name suggests, hold all the vertex information, like the vertex index, the initial vertex position, as well as the current vertex position and the current vertex velocity. This class also needs a constructor and a function that can calculate the displacement vector between the current vertex position and the initial one. Since we are applying a velocity to each vertex while the formation, we need to be able to calculate and update this velocity. We do this by subtracting the current displacement times the bound speed and the time from the current velocity. Now, of course our jelly shouldn't jiggle to eternity, but rather stop jiggling over time. To simulate this, we are using our saddle function. This will multiply the current velocity by 1 minus the stiffness times time dot delta time. This will ensure that our velocity will over time return to zero. Lastly, we need a function that lets us apply pressure to the vertices. We are doing this by getting the distance from our vertex to the input position, so where our mesh was touched, and using this to calculate an adapted pressure that will then turn into our new velocity. Now, to get the right direction for the new velocity, we use the point where the mesh was touched's normalized value. Next, we should talk about the jelly fire class that is going to be attached to every jelly object. First, we need to define some values like the bounce speed, which describes how fast it will jiggle back and forth, the fall force, which is a value that is supposed to emulate our mesh's mass for when we drop it, and of course, since we are dealing with mesh deformation here, we need to keep reference of our mesh filter and our mesh, as well as a list of our jelly vertices and the current vertices, which we are going to set up in our wake function. It is necessary to keep track of these, as these need to be applied to the mesh regularly, and by that I mean an update. In each update loop, we need to go over every single vertice and then update it with the functions we defined earlier in our Jelly Vertex class. These updated vertices do then need to be applied to our mesh in order for us to actually see the change. Now, if you want to have your mesh react to its surroundings, so when you drop it or bump it into another object, it will deform accordingly, you need to add an onCollider enter function in which we are looping through every contact point, apply an offset to it, and then apply pressure to our mesh on set point. Lastly, we are adding a public function that does basically the same thing as our onCollision enter function that we can call to apply pressure via a mouse click, which can easily be detected by using array and input.mouse position. And that is it. You should now be able to jigglify a bunch of fun things. I'm telling you, this is so addicting. I'd be really happy if you give this a try and tweet me pictures, gifs or videos of your jelly creations. 